Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this episode I want to talk about reasons to consider if you're thinking about getting into real estate photography, if you're in real estate photography and maybe considering a shift in careers because things aren't going so well, I want to address everything from top to bottom that could be affecting some of your decisions to want to enter the market or stay in the market doing real estate photography. A lot has changed since the pandemic start and right now we're into September 2021. If you're watching this video and it's a much later date, a lot of this will still apply because this has really set kind of a testing ground for real estate photography and other photography genres as well. You know if you're a wedding photographer over the last couple of years since the pandemic started, business has greatly declined because there aren't as many big weddings because of some of the restrictions on lockdown. Real estate has been different and I hear hear from a lot of photographers that are just getting into photography doing real estate or they're uh, thinking about it that well homes are going so fast I'm not getting any gigs. Is it even worth it? And I can tell you this is that since the pandemic, myself and a lot of my colleagues have been busier than ever because there's certain ways to shift in the market to make sure that no matter what happens with these swings in real estate, that you can still keep busy, you can still keep making money. Let's talk about that first step first, that first item that's coming up here. And I wanna get into a lot of others as well, including region and whatnot. Now, you know from a recent video that I talked about whether you should go pro. I've got a link to that video, so you can watch that as well down in the description for this video, as well as some other videos and other pertinent links. But what I wanna talk about here first is that when I hear someone say that houses are just flying off the market, yes, that is happening, but that's also a very ideal winnowing out process because what's happening, those are the bad clients. Good clients know that if they're going to sell themselves, if they're going to be able to appease clients, in other words, if they're really out for the long game, for longevity, they will want to have digital assets taken of the properties they shoot. So a lot of us uh, pros are still going out shooting properties when they already have offers. Why? Because that agent knows that when the next swing happens, they want to be able to show the houses that they listed during those tough times. They also don't want their competitors to be able to show potential clients that look what so-and-so did. This is all that they care. They just took one photo of the front. We go a lot further and we're going to hire whatever. So they don't want to have that used against them. So yes, there are still really good clients out there, but this means that you have to change the game a little bit. We've all heard the old saying that you strike when the iron's hot. And right now the real estate market is hot for sellers, not for buyers. And of course, then you would think it's not really hot for real estate photographers. But now is the most important time to start working on your skills. So I'm old enough to have seen quite a few shifts in the real estate market. I can remember back in the late 80s to the early 90s how there was a collapse in the market, especially in Southern California. The reasons behind that, not pertinent necessarily to this video, but that's when I had the opportunity to buy my first house. So it was because of a huge downswing and collapse in the marketplace well before the dot-com era came out that I was able to do that. And then at about 1999 into 2000, another somewhat geographical collapse happened in certain areas that were still overpriced too long on market. And so I was able to buy my second house, rolling that one in there. Long story about that. But then we also had the dot-com bubble burst. Right before then, we get into another type of market change was with then the, uh, the mortgage uh, crisis where we had those, um, the big short, uh, the whole movie was made about that. That, where we had these uh, terrible mortgages, people that could not afford them, and so we had eventual collapse in the marketplace that brought the market down. So these things happen over time. And the one key to this is to look for the sustainability. It's unsustainable right now to have 25% growth year over year on real estate values. People just can't afford eventually to buy something, and then people are holding on, thinking it's either for the last minute, or they just can't, they'll make alternatives. So there's a lot of stuff that will happen. It's all based off 
soft psychology and supply and demand to a large degree also, but it is temporary. So right now, even though you might not think that the real estate photography iron is hot to strike, now is the time to really get good because if you start faltering on this, you're going to miss the next window of opportunity, which is down the road. So things like this don't last forever. And eventually when the market shifts, you're going to be in higher demand. So when supply goes up, it needs to be marketed by everybody. So when we were talking about good clients, bad clients on the last point, the good clients are always going to want to have digital assets. In a market where more houses come on the market, those good clients are going to have more listings that they need to have digital assets made and that they'll also need to have more than just photos. They'll need to have add-ons, which I'll also get to here shortly. But the fact is too, when the market shifts, then the people that were taking the shortcuts during the everything can just sell with one picture market, they're gonna be also calling real estate photographers to get more marketing material as well. So it's not always when the iron is hot that you strike, it's when you prepare for when the iron will be hot next time. Another thing to consider, no matter what, when you're looking at getting into real estate photography is where are your clients? So one of the biggest things that I hear when people are complaining about one of my videos, like, how do you ever make any money? Because out here in Peoria, Indiana, or some, you know, Henderson, Nevada, or some remote location that has lower priced real estate compared to other regions, well, they're saying, you know, well, you know, I can only get a hundred bucks for, for doing a real estate photography sheet now. I've got plenty of videos that talk about this and I'll have the links to those also down in the description for this video. The key is, is that there are two things. One is that you will have clients in your area that will pay more, but most importantly is where are the clients going to be? So when you're in a higher priced market, obviously you can get clients that will pay more for marketing materials. They'll pay more for you shooting their gigs. So let's take just something like in Indiana, for example. You could take a look at near downtown and you could have a beautiful looking house about 2,300 square feet that's going to cost about $600,000 go 20, 30 miles outside of the city, and you're gonna be looking at a 2,300 square foot house, it's gonna cost half as much. So it's a stark difference, right, of doubling or halving, however you look at it from where you are. So if you're living in uh, one of the smaller areas, a smaller town outside of a metropolitan area, then yes, if you just wanna shoot in your own backyard and only travel five or 10 miles, you're not gonna get than the, the clients that are gonna be willing to pay for the higher end marketing material. Now, if you're satisfied with doing that, then that's fine. If you just wanna do this part-time and you're satisfied with doing whatever the market can pay, like some quick HDR, that's fine. But did you get into photography to do that? I mean, I didn't. And that's the thing I try to stress so much is, especially in the last video that I had when I was talking about becoming pro, is that, is this what you wanted to do? Right, so if, if you just wanted to take just some quick pictures and whatever, low quality, send them out because that's all they're gonna pay for, then maybe you should look at doing something different. Photography in itself is an art, maybe you should look at doing something you really appreciate doing and when it comes to making money, keep that separate. But you can, with real estate photography, target markets in every location for those metropolitan areas but you'd have to be willing to go there if you don't live near them. Let me give you an example. So I don't live in an area, I couldn't afford to live in an area in Santa Monica, in some of these expensive areas in Los Angeles. So I live outside of Los Angeles by quite a ways. So big difference. Now I still drive and I do gigs down there because Santa Monica, for instance, if you take a 2,300 square foot home in Santa Monica, when today's prices, it's between about five to six million dollars. I'm not gonna be able to afford a house down in Santa Monica. So up here closer to where I am, a 2,300 square foot house is about $900,000. Now I know that sounds like a lot of money and you're going, well, of course they're gonna pay you just to even shoot in your own backyard, true. But we have the same problem and every uh, region has the same problem with the uh, clients wanting to pay for good work. But the thing is there are always good clients willing to pay for it and it's their clients who are going to demand it. So Santa Monica, somebody's selling a five, $6 million uh, average size house, 
they're not going to be wanting to pay out a $300,000 to $400,000 commission to a real estate agent who's going to use their cell phone. They're going to expect to bring in a professional crew and pay that crew a little bit more than what they would for just some HDR quick run and gun photographers. So targeting metropolitan areas can really help. So, But no matter if it's metropolitan or not, know the region where your clients will be. And if you want to shoot good photography, if you really want to up your game, then you got to target clients in those regions that will allow you to expand into that. Before you can think about targeting clients and looking where you're going to be shooting, if you want to make the money and you want to get the high paid gigs, you have to ask yourself a really tough question. Are you good enough? Are you able to be better than what's out there? That's all the, that's all the only way that you're really going to get gigs if you're starting out. So yeah, you could be another, I'm just like the other people shooting. I'm just a me too. I'm just another business doing the exact same thing. McDonald's sells hamburgers. I'm going to sell the exact same hamburgers. It doesn't really work that way. You have to stand out and standing out is real easy in real estate photography because of the problem that you're facing back in step number one, which is when I talked about nobody wants to pay for anything. Well, that's because that, that type of mentality drives other photographers to do cheap work, to do low quality work. All you have to do is up your game. There will be then fewer people, and there always has been, fewer really good real estate photographers in a specific region. So you think about if you practice, if you get good, no matter what it is, to really start up in your game. And it brings me to my next point, which is this ironic thing that I just still don't quite understand. And that's that people won't make, a lot of photographers I should say, a lot of photographers won't make a small investment into their future to really expand their business and make more money. This is the way that it is for every type of business, not just photography. And I'm not just talking about gear, I'm talking about simple stuff. Here's a great example. I'm going to pitch my books right now. Welcome the downvotes because here I go. People and a lot of photographers won't pay 10 bucks for my book on business techniques for real estate photography. It's one of my best sellers on Amazon. But it's like, and people will be asking me questions on my YouTube channel or sending me emails, and I refer them to the book. And then, of course, then the downvotes came. And you can see that's why probably these downvotes on this particular video happened because somebody doesn't want to spend 10 bucks to make thousands. And that isn't a pitch. I'm not a Tony Robbins. I'm just a photographer that knew that when I bought my Scott Kelby books a long time ago, then I followed some of his instruction. And if you've been to workshops or you've been to other things, you know that a little bit of training can go a long ways. You can buy all of my eBooks for like 150 bucks or so, right? That of right now of what I have available, by the way, more are coming down the road. But with a little bit of knowledge with that, you're going to get the exact facts in a concise manner to more quickly address how to do the things in real estate photography that will help you make money. If you're out on YouTube and you're doing nothing but searching YouTube and watching YouTube videos of the University of YouTube to try to understand how to do professional work, you're going to get a hobbled together mess of a tossed salad of various things. Yeah, you could try. Yeah, you could do this. But you're going to be spending countless hours. So instead, a small investment, like in some of my books or some of my training, is going to go a long way. And whether it's me or someone else, consider that also. I'm not the only one that sells books on photography, so consider that as well. Think about the investment in learning that will then provide you profit down the road. A couple more things here real quick. It's very important, don't want to miss this at all, is that if you're considering real estate photography, getting into it, staying into it, whatever, is that you have to think about, can you keep up the pace? Because once you get good, once you start targeting the right clients, you will be busy. And it might not be a schedule that you really appreciate. For instance, most of the summers, I'm completely busy. We can't take a summer vacation. Now, you can, and I do have a photographer that I trade off with down in Los Angeles that if I really need to take a summer vacation, I can, but I really would rather wait until the slow season. So the peak season for real estate photography 
photography is during the spring, summer, and early fall. So we take family vacations more toward the holidays. And of course, that's when we all have a lot more time off in general from everybody else's work and whatnot. So that's one thing to consider. Also, the pace of real estate in general can be very fast. So if someone needs to get a house on the market because they need to sell it before they can buy the one that they really want, called a concurrent close, to be able to do that, well, you might have to be out there in two days at the most. You also might have to turn those pictures around very fast. So also think about, you might be working Saturdays. This last summer in 2021, I don't think there was a Saturday I had off. If I wasn't out shooting on Saturday, I had to catch up on editing because I had so many shoots on, for instance, Friday and Thursday to, to get everything in so I could at least enjoy some time with my grandkids on Sunday that I had to work every single Saturday. This is common in real estate. So real estate is not a nine to five job. So think about that. Also, there's twilight shoots. During the summer, that's really tough. You're not gonna get home until nine o'clock, maybe later if you're up in Alaska or the other northern regions. So you have to think about that during the winter, it's easy. Ah, in Southern California, I can do a twilight shoot in the middle of winter at five or 5.30, no big deal, I'm home for dinner. But these are things you have to consider about the pace. Now, the good news with that is that you can set your own schedule. Once you get into a groove with some of your clients, the ones that really do like your work, they'll tend to be more flexible on the days and hours that you can fit in what you can shoot for them. So that's an important thing to consider. One more item, just real quick though, and that is that along with that, you have to consider that you can't be the lone wolf out there. You can't be just the guy or the gal that is shooting pictures. So I know a lot of great photographers, many, many photographers that shoot fantastic real estate photos, but they don't know where to start with virtual tours, with videography, with drone, websites, all those things need to be in your kit bag. You need to be able to provide all these services so that you are a turnkey service provider. Now, that isn't to discourage you from getting into real estate photography at all. I don't wanna say that at all. So two uh, different ends of the spectrum here. If you're just getting into real estate photography, know that that is a goal that you will need to achieve. If you don't do it yourself, you need to partner with someone who will, so you may start seeking out as an entry point into real estate photography to reach out to drone pilots, to reach out to videographers. See if you can complement their work by doing photography first with them and then building up your skill sets. You may collaborate and find that you're working well with a team. If you are an established real estate photographer, you're already getting gigs. Yeah, you could see about farming out some of your drone work or video work or whatnot, or consider also learning those skills yourself. I have that book on basic videography for real estate, another one on virtual tour photography. And both of those are the basics because nine times out of 10 for real estate, a lot of this stuff is just a simple add-on, but you can charge a lot more for that. So you don't need necessarily a high-end expertise on the video and virtual tour, other uh, services that you may provide. So those add-ons though need to be available to your clients, something you definitely can't leave out. So there is a lot to really consider if you're thinking about staying in real estate photography, if you're thinking about entering real estate photography, and I'll tell you from my own personal experience, I would never look back. I had a 30 year career as an engineer, mechanical engineer, software engineer, and telecommunications. And during the last half or so of that career, when I started doing photography, I just wished and wished I could eventually do that full time until I got to the point where I was so busy, I had to make a career decision of one or the other. And I'm so glad I will never look back on the decision that I made to become a real estate photographer and I tossed my engineering career out the back window. It has been something I've enjoyed. I found that this was a niche that I really found that I could get into. And I would highly encourage anybody who has the desire and thinks they may have the desire to do this to get into it, give it a try. And here's an important thing when you do, because I'm not going to say if, I'm going to say when you do, because I guarantee you, 
You can shoot real estate photography. You can make virtual tours and you can make real estate videos. This stuff is not rocket science. Yes, there's a skill to it. Yes, it's not gonna be quick. And yes, you have to work your way up the ladder a little bit to be able to perfect and hone your skills to do this. But you can do it, trust me. If a guy like me that used to sit back behind a desk writing code and behind a draftsman board, being able to, we're using AutoCAD and whatnot, if I could do those things and I transitioned into then real estate photography, a completely different field, I know that you can do this as well. It takes time, it takes dedication, but let me tell you, if you are driven to something, if you have any desire, photography, dance, anything in the arts whatsoever, if you really do have a passion for it, you can make it happen by just not giving up on that passion. So if you have a passion for photography, you think that you'd like to try real estate, don't stop, go for it. Don't let anything hold you back and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it, you can. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography career as well. If you did like this video and you wanna see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.